Welcome, we've got a project here for the Chicklet. She's working on a diorama project and we have to print some jungle type animals. I have a list here of a bunch of different animals and what colors she wants. And we're going to locate some of them and print them. I've done a couple already. I've done some butterflies and a tiger. Uh, the whole list is butterflies, tiger, sloths, an elephant, an orangutan, and a python. So I've already done the butterflies, I've done the tiger, and the orangutan. I printed an elephant, but it was too small, and I just haven't had the time to set up the printer and let it run for six or eight hours to print the larger one. But I just got some new green filament. It's pretty cool. It's the Amazon Basics brand, but it is like a matte finish on this green, and I really want to see what it looks like. So I'm jumping to the bottom of the list for the Python, and we're going to see what that looks like. This turns out to be a pretty good deal because uh, printing these things in special colors, people like to buy me new filament. So let's see. I looked up python and what do you think you get here that's exactly it that's what you come up with all right cooler there's one let's see what else we got Ooh, that one is cool what else what else what else what else <laughs> yeah, not that one. Let's see. One with the teeth. That one looks pretty cool. Definitely takes some support structure. Uh, we're going to print this on a Prusa Mark III. This is my newest printer, and I love it. It can probably handle printing that without support structure. Well, that's too bad. Let's download this. Okay, we have downloaded the file. We're in Prusa Slicer Edition. Let's load it up and see what it looks like. Yeah, I don't think that's the orientation we want to print it at. And it's pretty small, so cool feature in Prusa Slicer Edition. You just lay it down on whatever surfaces it finds. Let's embiggen. Let's see, scale, let's do 150. It might be pretty good. What do you think? Do I need support material on that? Let's just see what it would look like. Build plate only. Yes, we want to do that. Slice and preview. The biggest problem I have with support material is when you're removing it, if you have like a leg or something that's sticking out, it can kind of break off pretty easily. Um, none the wiser if that tongue comes off. <clears throat> Let's try this. I think that is a decent size. She said she wanted about the same size as the tiger. So that might work out. Let's see what that tongue looks like in there. Whoops. No, it's not too bad. There's only a couple of lines in there. Should be okay. All right, we're going to fire up the printer and change out the filament. That's centered over there real quick. I have Octoprint set up, so 
I am able to just send directly to Octoprint, which is very cool. I'm not going to start it yet because we have to change out the filament. I think I have gray loaded silver. All right, all done. Here's the new printer filament that I have. It's got this pretty cool matte finish on it. Uh, we're going to load it up and switch this out. Got to preheat for PLA. This is my, my 3D printing rig here. You can see on top I have made some spool holders using some standard skate bearings. It's a product I was kind of trying to come up with. I've drilled holes through the table here and put these little guides in so I can just feed that right through. You want to clip some of this off at an angle. I don't know if you can see that just right, but if you clip it at the most extreme angle you can get, it will feed into here much easier. We are preheated and I'm going to unload the filament here. All right, we got that. Roll this up a little bit. And since we're already preheated and we have our nice angle on that, going to load filament. Before you hit the button, if you have one of these guys and you don't know already, I'll put that in there before you hit the load filament button and it will immediately start taking it up. So what it's going to do is it's going to feed enough filament in to push out the other garbage that's in there. and it knows exactly how much it's going to push through to feed that out. So you can see it's starting to screw out of there already. And it's silver and turning green. Can you see that? So if you don't have the filament already in there, it starts extruding and you don't get this length. And pull that off quickly so it breaks otherwise you'll get a nasty string in there and it'll be all over the place here we go Our snake is done. I tried to set up a time lapse on this, but it did not work. I will get that fixed so in future 3D prints, you will have time lapse that comes with it. We'll do that before the next one. So let's pull this off of here. Get a good look at this. Pull that off there and we'll start cleaning it up. Probably gonna hear a bunch of noise. I've got roofers on my roof, banging around up there, putting a new roof on had an old shake roof and uh, a couple of years ago, I know it's too late now, but a couple of years ago, my neighbor right over here, house burned down. It's about 10 feet away from my house and I slept through the whole thing, shake roof, fire department was here spraying down my house, not a good deal. So over the years with a shake roof, Squirrels and rodents can chew through the wood and they totally don't mind. They actually enjoy chewing through wood. So they put a couple of holes in the house and decided to live in my attic. So, you know, needed to get those guys out of there. So new roof, brand new, kind of getting the house ready. Maybe it's going to be for sale in the next year or two. We'll see. But Anyways, that's where all the banging and crazy noise comes from. Let's see what we got. Put this way. And this is the fun part of build support material. It's trying to get it off without breaking this little guy to bits. 
let's see what we can do. That was easy. And it was a pretty cool material. It's got a little more sheen to it than I thought it would, but it's still a pretty cool color. And maybe the coolest part about it was it was free. The lady bought it for me for the kid for this and a couple of trees. And now I have a whole spool of this cool green. So awesome, awesome deal. It's the not so glamorous part of 3D printing. If you haven't 3D printed before, see builds on the internet or a friend shows you something or whatever, oftentimes they just say, hey, look at this cool thing that I printed. Wasn't that awesome? They don't talk about going through these processes and trying to get all this little bit off. And there's a post-processing step too, you know. <clears throat> these things come out all right, but even if you don't use support material, there can be a post-processing step where you want to clean it up as much as you can. And you're often in there with a pair of these, one of these fellas trying to pick stuff out because you get little boogers on it no matter what you do. Often people will sand their 3D prints and they look really nice. You can also put them in an acetone mist bath and you'll get a nice shiny finish on it. I do not have one of those, but they do have one at Maker HQ, which is one of the maker spaces that I'm associated with. We'll go down there one of these days and we'll talk to Mike. He is the man down there. So we want to preserve your tongue, little guy. Where is your tongue? I think some teeth might have just came off of that piece. I get a better set of these that I just use for electronics and one that I just use for these. Right now I'm sharing them. Yeah, we might lose that tongue, but that's just between us. We don't have to tell the girls. It's a diorama anyways. You're going to look through a hole and see this thing. There they go. Yesterday they were working right above me. It was amazingly loud. I was on a video conference meeting parts of the day. Oh, and they're back right above me. Thanks guys. Didn't you see the recording in session light? No, I don't have one of those. I should get one though. Maker HQ is hosting a combat robotics event in the not too distant future. I'm pretty excited about that. <clears throat> I'm not going to compete this time. Uh, I've been asked to be the head judge, so I will do that. And I will take you guys with me because that should be a pretty fun event. I don't remember exactly what it is, but we'll shoot a bunch of the combat and we'll make a whole episode out of it. It'll probably be an extended long episode full combat robotics. I think there's two or three different classes that we're doing. Uh, it should be awesome. It's one of my favorite things to do. I've got two combat robots that I have entered and one placed with. Got a first place with my autonomous ant weight. Went up against the Sacramento State College Combat Robotics team. And we won, we took first place, we destroyed. I, think I have a little bit of video of that, I'll show it at some point. 
Uh, the other one I have is, a, 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 did I say that that one was autonomous? It was not autonomous. It was completely remote controlled and it was a vertical spinner. Pretty cool. The autonomous one was a sumo bot that I built. Um, let's see, here's the size of it. I'll feature that in one of these videos too. I took second place with that guy. So this is probably good enough. Here it is. Let's see if I can focus on this better. bottom's a little ugly. Knock, knock. Okay, we're done with this one. We're going to move on to one of the other animals. See you soon.